regular season international flights for Philippine Airlines with your news anchors, Nikki and Carlos, reporting live at Tara Loves Radio Worldwide. For the state, breaking news. Reporting live at the Fourth Estate, so Carlos and Nikki. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Welcome back here at the Fourth Estate with your host, yours truly, Carlos and Sir Nikki. Sir Nikki, how are you doing? Oh, not too bad, Carlos, not too bad. Uh, good evening, good evening, and good morning to the people of the Philippines. That is right. Nako, um, Sir Nikki, I'm, I'm very, very ecstatic and very, very excited for today's show. There's a lot of things going on in our world today. And, um, you know, we're going to tackle a few of them. And, um, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's hope that our viewers and our listeners worldwide is ready for uh, this show tonight. What do you say? Yes, definitely. Uh, we got a lot of stuff uh, to cover tonight, uh, Carlos. And let's start the ball rolling with uh, what's happening in Neapolis. Uh, what can you say about what's happening in Neapolis, uh, Carlos, for those people who, who don't know? Yes, what um, of course, as we all know right now, um, a lot of stuff is going on, going down, going down and going on at the uh, Minneapolis uh, city right now. Um, you know, very unfortunate that, um, that this never ending history of um, racism is, um, you know, is alive and well. And, um, you know, we just cannot digest it here right now um, in, 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 in Canada and in Alberta. I mean, of course, that's a very, very known, um, you know, um, big factor in, in our lives. And you know what? Um, sometimes it makes me speechless because sometimes it's so hard to answer to your kids. It's so hard to answer to those kids that doesn't know what's going on and, um, you know, let alone this pandemic, this pandemic that's happening in, in our in our world right now, and here we are looking at this, and um, it's a big mess. So it's a very big mess. Carlos, I I, I know I, for the benefit of the viewers, right? Uh, what really happened? What really happened in Minneapolis there? Well, um, as we all know by now, um, um, this this fella. Um, Clayton, I think, I believe is his name, um, you know, um, George was Floyd. murdered. Let's just put it that way. Let's just mur He was murdered um, by a cop um, in Minneapolis. Um, he was, I think he, he was put on a, on a, ne on a knee. He was pinned down with a knee, right? He put a knee on his neck um, yes. and he held it on for eight minutes and 46 seconds i think it was um even even um the bystander that, that was watching and that was viewing uh, and and as videotaping recording this this event um of course couldn't digest what he was seeing um but to um see a young fella like this go down like that um but what um, from, uh, carlos was the uh if you look at the video uh and you review the video. Uh, I, I look at the video. There was no resistance from this uh, from George Floyd, right? No, um, George, no. George none, Floyd. None whatsoever. None, none whatsoever. whatsoever. They were showing a couple of clips that I was that I was watching. Um, he was stopped. Um, he got out of the vehicle. Um, he got out of the vehicle without any hesitations or whatsoever. Um, he was put on. The, um, he was put on against the wall. He complied with everything that, that he can. Um, he's, they said he was intoxicated. They said he was on something. But, um, you know, again, that was all uh, prejudgment and not even, you know, it wasn't uncalled for. Um, whatever they did, um, you know, it was all seen on a video. There was a few videos 
that was uh, flying around and um, and I witnessed it. I, I saw it earlier today, and um, you know it's very, very, very disturbing. Very, very disturbing. Yes, to serve and protect. That's what the cops should have done. But uh, it, it looks like that you know the it, police officer's name was Derek Chauvin. Uh, pin him down uh, using his knee, and and the person, George Floyd, was pleading that the the cops uh, around him, and saying he couldn't breathe, and no one, no one ever did anything to help the poor guy. Not there was even four cops. There was four the cops, cops standing cops around. Didn't even do anything, and didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. What? And um, well, you know what? Um, I, I hate to say this, you know, I hate to say this. And again, I was I was talking to, to Sherry Ann last night and I said, um, you know, it's very unfortunate that, that we have to go through things like this. Our kids, um, the, the young the young kids that doesn't know uh, what this racism is all about, they're seeing it, they, they see it, they're seeing it firsthand and it's, it's very, very disturbing. Like I said, even to my kid, I don't know how to explain it. Um, they're seeing it right now. Um, have you seen uh, the city of Minneapolis right now? Yes, it's it, it's people have been you know burning stuff. Uh, they've 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 gone through a lot of uh, riots uh, out there. Not only just Minneapolis right now. If you if you look at it, uh, just uh, Atlanta, uh, they uh, the, the rioters have uh, destroyed uh, the glass up up front in the, uh, the CNN center. That's bothersome because uh, CNN is even the CNN reporters were a victim of uh, of harassment by the cops. Um, in fact, uh, one of the reporters uh, photographer was detained by the cops uh, in Minneapolis. So that's that's quite you know that's a violation of the First Amendment and of the freedom of the press, and that's that's just a big no no uh, for the cops in Minneapolis there. Uh, CNN is not your enemy. CNN does its duty to report to the public as to the information they're receiving. And all these people, I, I'm not sure what went into their mind uh, in Atlanta there. All this crowd went to CNN, and CNN is not your enemy. Yes, and I heard um, he was released an hour after he was detained, and there was an apology made by the mayor um, to CNN. And that's a good thing because I, I understand the mayor understands that that's a clear violation of the First Amendment. And uh, all around the United States right now, there are people, you know, uh, really mad at what happened to George Floyd. You go to Los Angeles, uh, there's ra rallies and protests around Los Angeles also. Even in New York City, um, there, there is protest in New York City as well. Yes, and uh, again, you know, Sir Nikki, and um, we're um, ano bang tawag dito? Hindi naman sa hindi natin alam, or we're being naive, and we don't think that it, it's there. You and I, we both know that um, that this whole racism thing is is alive, and like I said earlier, it's alive and well. Um, it's it's something that's uh, that that's got a big root. Na hindi talaga ma na So you know, it does it have to come? That, does it have to come to this situation right now? Where I'm gonna tell you probably the whole the whole uh, the whole U.S. is just gonna go. Um, the, they're gonna go crazy. I know. Um, again, earlier uh, it was said na, um, that the cop that was. Um, that murdered um, Clayton, Mr. Clayton, um, is already been uh, arrested uh, for for the murder. So that I know um, that was developing earlier in the afternoon today, and um, he is supposedly detained and 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 um, and um, you know, hopefully we'll go for a long time. Yeah. Well, third degree murder, and uh, what what's bother bothering here is that uh, the only person charged is the one who pinned him down um i believe there is a a need to investigate this further on why those three other cops with derek did not take any action 
at all. Yes, and, you're right. And you so know hopefully, what? pati yung ano, pati, I mean, they were there. They were there. And I was watching one of the uh, cops from, uh, uh, I think from, uh, I forgot exactly, but I, I, I know it's probably, I think Denver, I think it is. He, he, made, a, he made a video and put it on social media siempre saying that, you know what, if that was me, if I, if I was one of those poor guys, I will make sure that whoever is putting a knee on that person, on, on Clay, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, again, they're supposed to be, like we said, they're supposed to be protecting us. Um, they're supposed to be using their badge um, for, the good, for the good reason and not for their own reasons. You know, so um, it's, it's I, uh, I, I'm lost for words. I'm lost for words right now because um, yes, you know, I and Carlos, please take note also, okay, to all to all the our viewers, okay, this fight is not the fight of the uh, Black Americans. Uh, I call it the African American against against the Caucasians or against the whites. If you look at the rallies around New York, around Minneapolis, around Los Angeles, around Atlanta. It's a mix, a, a crowd mix of yes. young kids. When, when you say young kids, these are collegiate students. And there's a lot of, uh, I, I believe, Caucasian. Uh, uh, it's a mix. It, it, it's not really, this is not about uh, the African-American race. This, this is about racism. This is about irresponsible policing. This is, this is about pride that, you know, they change, okay? They change the way policing should be. Yes, I, I definitely saw that earlier too. Um, and, and you're definitely and definitely right. I think we were watching the same things. But you know what, though, Sir Nikki, um, what about the looting? Um, you know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of uh, those other people. Um, is I think they're taking advantage of the situation right now. Well... Let me tell Those you this. people looting. I'm appealing to all these protesters, okay? It is not bad to show your emotions. It is not bad to express your right. But please, please do not destroy public property. Do not destroy things that are looking great. You know, you go to CNN Tower and throw a rock and, and, and break a window. That, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and then, like I said, they were looting. They were, they were stealing. They were, they were burning down, uh, you know, the police stations and like what you said, all the other facilities. And also they're going into Walmarts. They're going into stores and they're just basically taking whatever they can. I saw one video earlier and um, again, yet another very, very disturbing because um, I saw this lady, she was in one of those, um, you know, those uh, automated little uh, carts or I, how do you call that? Those little handicapped carts. Yeah, scooters. Sco yeah, scooters, right? I think she was holding uh, a knife and stubbing whoever she can, getting into her way. And I saw, did you see this one where um, somebody took the fire extinguisher and just started blowing this fire extinguisher on her? Yes. And, and that's that's ridiculous, okay? You, we can do protests. We can disagree with what the cops did. And this person has already been charged. So please, let's be more intelligent, okay? Let's let's be mindful yes. of our actions because uh, the repercussions after these actions are far greater than, than what the action is right now. I understand, and that, that is a fact. And he is actually being charged for a, a third-degree murder and a manslaughter. Yes. So I think he's gonna go for uh, for quite a bit, and hopefully, um, you know, put him put him away good. Because again, it's it's not right. Let's just go back to where we started here. It's not it's not right in any way, shape, or form. Kung ano yung ginawa kay uh, kay uh, Mr. Clayton. So. Um, again, you know what? I know the fourth estate right now and myself, I only have a small voice. I only have a small voice, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it because 
you know, um, it is, it is, it is, it is not, um, it, it is not something, um, it is not just something because to them it's really big. To them it's really big. They've been fighting for their, they, they've been fighting for forever. Um, the color, uh, the, the, the people, the people in, 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 uh, in the U S um, the black and people has been fighting for this for so long, for many, many years. And you know what? We stand behind them because you know what? It's all equality. Like for us, we don't see color. We don't see anybody different. Um, we're all equal. Yeah. We have all to remember that, you know, uh, this regardless of, of race or color, we're all human beings in this world, and everyone needs to be treated fairly. Yes, and so um, yes, to, to Sir George Floyd, I keep I keep saying Clayton, but it's it's yes, it's George Floyd. Um, again, last word for uh, this event, uh, Sir Nikki. Yes. Uh, so to again, I'm appealing to all the protesters. Uh, please, please refrain from hurting anyone. Uh, it doesn't make it the situation any better. So let's be more intelligent uh, and and do protest quietly, right? Let your voice be heard, and you don't need to hurt anyone. You don't need to destroy property, but go on with your protest. I I understand. I'm with you. Racism has no place in this world. Yes, sir. I second the motion. Um, now, let's talk about um, let's talk about what's going on in, in our world right now. Um, just briefly, what do you think of um, this situation right now? Earlier, again, we're going to speak about earlier today. President Donald Trump releases, or they. Um, they signed off of um, WHO. Oh, you know, WHO has been, you know, has a lot of uh, questionable moves uh, since the pandemic outbreak, right? Since the pandemic breakout. There's a lot of questions as to who really is dictating upon the WHO are are they the World Health Organization or are they the Chinese World Health Organization or are they even the American World Health Organization? We really don't know. Um, they should be for the world and for 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 everyone in the world, not one country that uh, dictates uh, the World Health Organization. Yeah, and and I can't understand it for for a USA. To be such a big part of this this organization, um, you know, they will they were misled just like us, right? So, like right now, who is to blame? Who's 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 the who 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 do we who's <laughs> liable for all of these things that's happening right now, right? With this exactly. COVID, exactly. And uh, honestly, uh, if you look at uh, Carlos, if you look at the head of the World Health health organization of world hate as i call it world <laughs> the world is hating it <laughs> yes well everyone's everyone's in quarantine everyone doesn't you know your quarantine is like you're in jail okay you're in jail but you're in home quarantine right and and that's that's a, no one wants to be to be at home all the time but we, we are restricted now because of the global pandemic, and we could understand that. But all this information, the, the reason why the World Health Organization exists is to prevent such a global outbreak like this, right? But uh, if they can't really control it, uh, they can't disseminate the right information, then we have a problem. And you know the other thing too, part of that, Part of that, it didn't. It didn't sound like. It didn't sound like he was calling a war. I know he called a war earlier against 
the Twitter, the social media Twitter, Donald Trump did. But anyways, um, again, earlier he was talking about um, China. Okay? How, um, how unprecedented action against China is, you know, um, this is very scary. To me, this is very scary. Because it's one... It's one push of a button. Like all of these guys right now is, you can tell they're almost to the point where, you know what? Is that what they said? Is that what they're going to do? Well, you know what? Ano mangyayari? Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and you know what? When Donald Trump, President Donald Trump starts to talk about social media and, and, and obviously he's not liking what he's seeing. And I... Honestly, I don't blame him, okay? Uh, for the reason that social media is, is unfiltered. When, when I say social media is unfiltered, uh, Carlos, there's a lot of things that go into social media and it's, it's not the true facts. And, and that's the truth, okay? They're unverified information. So you have to do your due diligence. If you're watching a lot of social media reports, you have to do your own due diligence. But if you're watching shows like The Fourth Estate, if you're watching shows that are, are newsworthy, right? Uh, it, it's better to go back to their traditional news source. Don't rely just on social media because social media is unfiltered information. I second that. I second the motion. I definitely agree on that. I definitely agree on that. Um, okay, well, we're going to speed things up a little bit because we have a very, very special guest that, um, that I'm sure our guest will be, um, very excited to hear his point of views, um, his, his, ano eh, kumbaga, his intelligence, uh, kailangan marinig at malaman ng mga, ma, ng mga manunod at makikinig sa atin today. That's, uh, very true. Uh, yeah, when, when we come back, uh, Carlos... Uh, we'll definitely uh, have a very special guest, an honorable gentleman uh, that a lot of people will will definitely agree that he has he, he is someone that you want to hear. And uh, we'll be right back uh, after this short break. Okay. Very good. We'll take a short break. For the state, we'll be right back shortly.
The Fourth Estate with Nikki and Carlos. Okay, welcome back. And tonight we're so honored uh, and so lucky to have a fine gentleman who started his career in the military and retired with the rank of Brigadier General. Our guest finished his engineering degree at the University of East in 1966. Electrical engineering in 1967, one of the top notchers in the ECE, Electronic Communication Engineering Licensure Examination in 1971. April of 1983, he finished his electronics industries course at Ateneo de Manila University. Our guest today has held various positions in his military and public life. Yes, he was an instructor of the Philippine Military Academy from 1971 to 1974. Other positions he has held includes head of the AFP Research and Development Center, Communications and Electronics, our Research and Development Group, Group Commander of the Military Intelligence Group 21, ISAP, Philippine Embassy's Defense and Armed Forces Attaché, Assistant Chief of Staff for Communication, Electronics and Information of the Philippine Army, and Deputy Chief of Staff Communication and Electronics and Information of the AFP, J-11. Commissioner of the National Telecommunication Commission and former Acting Secretary and Under Secretary of the Department of Information and Communication and Technology under the Duterte administration. Without further delay, let me welcome retired Brigadier General Liceo Mejares Bio Jr. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, Nikki, uh, Carlo. Uh, yes, uh, it's a privilege and honor to be invited in your program. Thank, thank you for you, thank you for gracing our show, sir. So, how do you want us to address you tonight? Uh, well, <laughs> Ellie, Ellie, as my friends call me, and uh, yeah, that's what we are right now, friends. Karon po, kasi gusto ko sana ng sabihin ulit yung sinabi ni Sir Nikki kaso haba. <laughs> <laughs> but no, well, as, a, as a former acting secretary of under secretary of the DICT, what is the role po, of the DICT? What projects have you done? Can you let the people know so they can understand? Okay, uh, Carlo. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, I think you know that uh, the president has accepted my resignation. Uh, what is a little unique about it is that resignation was filed January 31 of this year and uh, four months, about four months later, it was accepted. No? Uh, well, my position, as you said, is under secretary, uh, but during the uh, pandemic crisis, uh, we have to stay at home. So in the office, maganda yung pangalang ang title ko, no? under secretary for operation. Pero pagdating sa bahay, eh, naging under na lang. So, umikli ng konti. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, well, as under secretary for operations, no, uh, I was given the task of uh, two pilot projects of the ICT, which are the National uh, Broadband Program no, to connect all uh, government uh, offices and agencies down to the barangay level. More than uh, 50,000 of these, um, even in the far-flung areas, to the internet, so that the government will have uh, can give um, basic services online. No? And that one is uh, ongoing. And uh, the other one is the uh, uh, free Wi-Fi uh, for all uh, public places, hospitals, uh, public schools. Um, municipalities and things like and the others uh, and we are targeting uh, 104,000 to be completed by 2022. So those are the uh, flagship projects of the ICT which uh, were under my care up to uh, well uh, approximately 10 days ago no and I think I also know that the one who is going to take over my position, is uh, 
Ramon uh, Jacinto, no? Uh, who was uh, the presidential advisor for uh, ICT. Um, so yes, uh, I think um, uh, the project will go on because uh, they are actually mandated by law, especially the free Wi-Fi. Uh, and uh, uh, our, our focus, our focus uh, at this point of time is of course uh, in, in our fight no? uh, against the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic uh, crisis. No? And uh, the, uh, uh, here people realize the importance of information and communication technology. I think the whole world uh, has uh, shown that uh, ICT was very important in uh, uh, major aspects in fighting this uh, COVID-19 virus. No? So I, the ICT played a big role. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, we came up with a data warehouse where all the uh, data uh, related to uh, the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, were, uh, were uh, Stored. generated and we came up with uh, uh, visual analytics of this data and that's what's going on right now. Okay. So, so, Mr. Rio, we all know that the internet in the Philippines is not that great. This is why we brought in the third telco company. Yes. What else have you done or the DICT has done under your watch uh, to improve the internet connection in the Philippines? How far are we from achieving this? And can you explain in layman's language? Uh, ano po ang problema sa internet po natin sa Pilipinas kung bakit tayo behind? Ano? At ano pa dapat ng gawin? Okay. Ang uh, problema ng internet natin talaga is uh, really lack of infrastructure, no? Um, since uh, uh, year 2000, when uh, the uh, mobile uh, network began to be uh, established in our country, uh, that time, if you'll notice, or uh, if you remember, uh, we we are still on 2G, no? There are dalawa lang yung uh, services noon, uh -huh. voice and SMS, no? Na, na and in fact, if you remember, the Philippines became the uh, SMS or texting capital of the whole texting world. Texting capital, yes. That was, uh, of course, uh, something that contributed to our uh, uh, problems right now because. When we became addicted to SMS, the telcos, uh, you know, uh, SMS is a very narrow band system. And you don't need that much towers or cell sites to send. Uh, we were sending then about 2.4 billion text messages a day, no? Imagine that. Wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, if you for example, uh, 50,000 of you are near a cell site. All of you, let's say, at the same time, send uh, a 160 character SMS. That cell site can accommodate all of you, 50,000 of you, in uh, less than a minute or two. No? Um, so the few cell sites uh, are uh, already enough no, to make, uh, well, that the uh, mobile network operators, uh, Globe and Smart, the biggest one, uh, rich. <laughs> they became so, rich because so of... Sir, uh, po ba? Po ba itong growth natin because of that? Yes, because for almost, well, all, uh, more than uh, 10 years, there was no incentive to put up additional infrastructure. They were raking in so much money, no? Just from uh, SMS. And in fact, uh, those uh, telcos that did not uh, provide uh, uh, texting or SMS uh, services, they all folded up or were bought by Globe and Smart. PLDT, for example, a big company before, was actually bought by uh, Smart. No, it's Smart. not the other way. People think that PLDT was the one who brought Smart. 
No, it's the other way around. Other way around. Yeah. Yes, and also uh, Globe, you got uh, Buy and Tell and other uh, fixed line, fixed line companies. No? But when uh, 3G came in and uh, uh, smartphones uh, became uh, available to the Philippines around uh, 2014, then we felt the uh, lack of infrastructure because now instead of a very narrow band system of uh, texting, we now have to ha get uh, uh, content from the internet. No? And uh, in other countries, why did they not have this problem? Because they were not in texting, they were in voice. Now, if you are in voice, if you're using voice services like in the United States, in Canada, you need uh, plenty of cell sites no? because one cell site can accommodate only about less than 24 uh, simultaneous calls. No? Mm. So if you want to have uh, more um, subscribers calling in, you have to build more cell sites. Okay. That is not true with uh, SMS. As I have said, 50,000 of you can send an SMS message and all of you will be accommodated. But uh, 3G is internet content. No? And uh, so uh, we tried our, our best to, to catch up, put more cell sites, but uh, yeah, uh, it, we were overtaken. And until now, we have only around 21,000 uh, cell sites. So when I became the acting secretary, the first thing I did, aside from bringing in a third telco to give competition to the, uh, uh, they call it duopoly, no? uh, Globe and Smart, was also to invite uh, uh, common tower providers that are independent of the telco to invest in the Philippines, put up towers, and lease it out to the uh, uh, Globe Smart and the third telco, which is Dito. No? This is being done in other countries, actually. Uh, but uh, we just started doing it about uh, two years ago. And uh, it has also improved our, our connectivity. In fact, to the point where uh, uh, had this pandemic uh, happened two, three years ago, uh, we could not be talking like this right now, no? Uh, uh, also, what helped, what helped in uh, uh, improving our, well, connectivity was, if you will remember, uh, the first year of President Duterte's administration, uh, first few months, in fact, he requested our Congress to give him emergency powers to uh, solve the traffic problem in EDSA. If you yes. remember that, that yes. was 2016. Yes. I, I, we do remember that. Uh, and the ICT is, is or was a new uh, department then. No, uh, we are also uh, we were created and uh, operate. We operated 2016. Uh, our advocacy then was uh, we told uh, the office of the president that uh, the ICT solutions could be uh, uh, should be considered, no? Because the two major cause of traffic in EDSA are people going to work and students going to school, no? School, and these yeah. two activities can be done at home if you have the good or proper <laughs> connectivity, no? Yeah. Work from home and uh, of course classes from home and because of this uh, a law telecommuting law was enacted two years ago because of this advocacy and in fact that helped the situation now no because uh, uh, it improved connectivity of our home to the internet but of course we still lack uh, the necessary infrastructure uh, to have it really uh, uh, enjoyed by most of our citizens. No? So is that why he was asking for a free Wi-Fi? Yan ba yung, kayo ba yung secret na, na, <laughs> na, ano nang tawag dito? Baraha na ginagamit ni, ni President Duterte noong araw na sinasabi niya na gusto ko mag, ang Philippines maging ano, Wi-Fi free. Yes, yes. Actually, it is, uh, uh, yes, under his administration, that they came up with the law, no? Uh, imposing that uh, public places, hospitals, uh, public schools, uh, state-owned universities and colleges, uh, public places, airports, ports, 
uh, bus terminals should have free Wi-Fi. No, it's a law that was enacted again about two years ago. And of course, the ICT is the one mandated to do that. Uh, and right now we have about uh, uh, almost 4,000 uh, free Wi-Fi sites all over the country. This year, uh, we have improved our, our uh, rollout by another 6,000 uh, using this time uh, satellite, no, VSATs. Uh, because uh, there are so many places in our country, in fact, 40% of our, of our country are uh, either underserved or unserved by the commercial telcos and only uh, satellite can reach them. So 6,000 po yan ang, ang ginagawa natin this year. Uh, uh, naabutan lang po ng, uh, ma yung mabilis na rollout nila. It was, uh, of course, uh, uh, slowed down a little because of the uh, uh, pandemic uh, crisis that we have now. No? Uh, movement uh, was slowed down. Uh, but it's still undergoing. Uh, so, yan po ang reason. Uh, and in, in fact, uh, uh, this now uh, has helped a lot in um, giving, bringing in information to our uh, government um, on the situation on, on the ground of the, uh, some of our far flung places uh, in the fight against uh, this uh, COVID 19. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, meron lang po tayong ano, meron lang po nagpapatanong here. Um, is 5G network, yung 5G po, um, has it, it has been rolled out in the U.S., leaving a lot of consumers believing that it is causing COVID-19 to spread across its area of, its, of, of the reach. What is your stance about this? Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, false. Uh, 5G has no uh, relationship or uh, cause or effect uh, relationship between uh, uh, its uh, transmission and uh, COVID-19. No? In fact, uh, uh, in, in Wahoon, where it started, uh, 5G has not yet been uh, that uh, uh, rolled out yet. No? In fact, uh, 5G is not yet really... Uh, uh, as uh, uh, as uh, uh, used by uh, us, uh, unlike 4G, 4.5G, no, because basically there is still no handset uh, that can uh, be used by our subscribers for 5G. Uh, 5G right now is more uh, being used for proof of concept, and it's not widely uh, widely used yet because of the lack of very uh, well, uh, inexpensive handset, no? Uh, they have not yet mass produced 5G handset to the point where it can become affordable to the average uh, consumer. So, uh, to say that it is the cause of this uh, pandemic is quite uh, false. Very good. And then, uh, I, I understand po yan. Pero, siyempre, kasi ang dami rin pong kumakalat na siyempre na na rumor na should we be scared so 5G ah uh, yes um, uh, that health issues really pati actually kahit na 2G 3G 4G nandoon palagi yung health issues no the radiation because it is a uh, uh, the radiation can cause cancer they say um, uh, but uh world Health Organization, even the FCC of the United States has already uh, debunked uh, the use of uh, 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 health issues against uh, 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 telecommunica uh, the mobile telecommunication networks. No, so you notice that uh, in even in these countries that are uh, very advanced technically. Uh, they still, uh, you know, uh, put up or roll out more mobile networks. No? And of course, there are some uh, packet of resistance in uh, oh, well. some state uh, that says or or some uh, communities that prevent uh, cell sites from meeting them, but from uh, putting up in their uh, uh, area. But it's there is still there is no uh, evidence that it has caused a death. Uh, 
directly from a cell site, no? Uh, and then there were uh, studies also in the United States say that the incidence of cancer is almost about the same as in an area where there are no cell sites or cell few sites. cell sites than in area where there are almost cell sites in every corner, you know? 5G is, they say, is dangerous because uh, you have to put more cell sites for 5G. In fact, uh, uh, you have to put them in every lamp post, for example, about 500 meters away, uh, just for it to be effective, no? Uh, so that is where they say the danger, more radiations are. But so far, there is no, because radiation emitted by your cell phone, no? By your cell phone impact is much greater than the radiation you'll ever get from the cell sites. Understand, so if you're understand. afraid of getting uh, cancer from a cell site, you should be more afraid to get it from a, your cell phone, no? From so, your own cell phone, yeah. Yes, oh, one more yes. thing, one more thing, uh, Mr. Rio, and let's go back to uh, let's go back to you, ano po, yung sa sa inyo. Uh, you tendered your resignation uh, after newly appointed ng DICT, uh, Secretary Gringo Honasan diverted 300 million pesos daw as intelligence fund. I uh, I understand you were not consulted. Is this correct? Can you shed more light to this for the for the sake of our of our listeners, Paul? Ah uh, yes, that was uh, around uh, November. We found out that uh, ar around uh, 300 million of confidential funds. No, for the first time, uh, and it was during the time of uh, Secretary Nathan that the ICT had what we call confidential funds. In other words, funds that uh, doesn't need the same uh, uh, strict uh, procedures as uh, other funds. No? It does not need any bidding. Uh, you can uh, actually just have uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, it does not need the same strictness of uh, uh, that the uh, ordinary funds are being uh, Disperse. Uh, disperse, no? So, so, uh, uh, and then what actually was my objection was it was done without any, you know, consultation. Well, they say uh, they don't have to consult anybody uh, that they don't want on a need to know basis. Uh, but I said, I am supposed to be under secretary for operation and being in the military and also Secretary Nasan is from the military. We know that intelligence and operations go together. <laughs> they could not be separated. No? In other words, what you're going to do uh, for intelligence is really for the uh, use of operations. And, and, uh, and, and uh, so I said uh, that's where I, 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 of course, tendered my resignation. Uh, and then the president, of course, uh, uh, tried to pass us up. And of course, uh, we did. And uh, uh, what was actually agreed was that Secretary Nathan will get full responsibility uh, in, uh, in that uh, 300 million uh, uh, disbursement of uh, the uh, confidential fund. No? So it takes full responsibility it. He uh, doesn't need to have me know or anybody else outside of his uh, circle that he thinks would uh, 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 well affect the uh, effectiveness of, of the uh, use of that uh, fund. So that we left it at that. No? Um, however, this, uh, I was caught by surprise by this, uh, why it was, uh, uh, four months later approved when in fact I thought it was already uh, uh, not, yeah, it was not anymore uh, An issue. Uh, being, uh, it was ignored by the president actually. No? Yes. Well, so, it has made, yeah, okay. So sir, just a follow up uh, on that, right? Uh, as an agency, uh, does the DICT have the man mandate to spy on civilians? So why is the <laughs> fund of 800 million even higher than the 
Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. <laughs> so I understand the ICT got 800 million, right? Is that correct? Um, actually, uh, 400 million, 2019. Oh, 400. That okay. one was uh, disbursed already. Uh, that's 2019. Okay. And uh, 900 million for this year. Uh, 900 million, uh, not 800 million. Yeah. I stand corrected. Yeah. So one, uh, yeah, 1. 1.3 billion all in all for 2019 and um. Uh, and this year, no. And what this year, I know, yeah. What I know is that uh, 300 million has already been disbursed. I don't know because I'm no longer in the need to know on uh, the other disbursement. But there is actually 900 million for this year. Uh, so, uh, yes. Uh, what? Why would? Uh, yeah. That would it be used for spying on people? Uh, that is not actually how cybersecurity works. No, <laughs> you do not use human agents to to come up with a cybersecurity regime. Uh, you have to use tools. You have to use uh, artificial intelligence. You have to use, uh, uh, you know, to catch these uh, threats to our cybersecurity. They are in forms of uh, software. No. They are not people that you are going to to catch. Of yeah, course, this, it is people who who uh, who uh, 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 plan them or program them. But uh, in other words, I, they will you could not uh, go to directly to these people because it's really very uh, you only uh, get to know that they are there because of the um, cybersecurity attacks that you are getting. No. And then you try to trace it to the source, no. But to go directly to the guy is quite impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with uh, with uh, with that, no. It's not. Uh, so so cybersecurity is more in uh, in uh, first uh, preventing uh, the access or or the penetration of uh, of harmful. Uh, uh, software or codes into your system, no, and uh, and then uh, try to trace where they're coming from. So you cannot use people in this, even if you have uh, uh, this. This will actually need uh, a system or or a platform uh, with the necessary. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence to really catch these people, no? So, and, hindi uh, lang po basta-basta ganun yun, is what you're saying? Yes, yes. Na, oh, okay. Na, and then, uh, if this were done so, in this manner, then we should have some, uh, in other words, we should have seen, or at least uh, uh, know that it is, uh, there are people doing this in our uh, department, no? Even Sir Nikki, uh, yeah. Sig Siguro okay. Carlos, you know, and uh, uh, General Rio, uh, people have to understand also, okay, bakit, bakit siguro, you know, one of the big questions is bakit 900 million, you know, na, na, napakalaki. Ang dami, ang <laughs> dami yan. Uh, you have to remember, you know, that uh, yung role ng DICT is very important. You know? the yeah. Information communication technology portfolio is a very important portfolio. Right? Uh, itong ginagawa natin ngayon, katulad ng sabi ni General Rio, could have not been possible if uh, the infrastructure is not there. Ano? Yan ang kulang natin through the years. Kulang you know? Um, na, na, ano eh, na, naiwanan tayo. Tawag natin naiwanan. No? And, uh, Imagine, uh, Carlo, uh, Vietnam, we were ahead of Vietnam in rolling out our mobile network by about five, six years. Now they have 70,000 uh, cell sites. No? Our population is about the same. Uh, they are about uh, a little less than 100 million. But they have 70,000 cell sites as against our about, let's say, 21,000 now. Oh Imagine. my. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, so we're really left behind. We are really very, behind. very. Yes, very much. Because really, because of our addiction to SMS. <laughs> mm, parang naiwanan tayo doon eh, no? Oo, kasi okay na yung uh, 20,000 cell site. Kayang-kaya kahit na gawin ninyong uh, 4 billion text messages a day. 
Kaya-kaya wow. yun. Wow. Eh, pero si as long Luis as they keep on going. As long as na talagang ginagamit parati is what you're saying, di ba? Kasi yung sales yes, size no. that's that's how it works. Yes, of course. Yes. But uh, now, uh, the content is no longer SMS. No, The content is now uh, internet. Video. Yeah, video. Yeah, ring. triple play. Media, triple play. Yeah. Video. Yeah. 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 Voice, uh, data, and, and Voice. video. Video, yeah. So, dati, pan lang. Data lang, SMS. Ngayon, uh, voice nga, na iwan ang pangalan natin, eh. hindi natin dyan ang ginamit. Eh. So, the demand has increased, right? Uh, but but yes. our uh, capabilities has not really increased, right? Yes. Sir Nicky, meron ako pa bang question kay uh, General Rio? Yeah, sure. So, sir, itong, itong ano nito, uh, four months, di ba, bago tinanggap yung Resignation, right, Carlos? Is that four months? Yes. It, yes. yes. Uh, January 31, and uh, it's now May uh, 27, 28. Yeah. So, it was so accepted what, last, last week, yeah. Yes, sir. So, unfortunately, sir, alam mo, uh, maraming umaasa sa, ano, no, uh, sa ginagawa nyo. Mara, a lot of people have been looking forward to what you've been doing, right? And then, uh, what happens now to the DICT? Uh, doon sa mga unfinished projects nito natin, uh, bak- bakit po kayo nag-resign? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yun nga, uh, of course, I, I serve at the pleasure of the president. No? The president, of course, uh, decides who he can uh, work with no? and who can help him. In, in Well, DICT is, of course, a uh, highly technical uh, department. And in fact, in fact, uh, it is the only department where there are specific uh, qualifications for the secretary, for the uni- uh, undersecretary, and for the assistant secretary, no? Section 11 of the RA 10844, the uh, uh, DICT law, specifically state that uh, these people must have seven years uh, expertise and um, competent in handling uh, information and communication uh, system, uh, well, I could not uh, remember uh, everything stated there, but it is highly uh, a technical uh, uh, position. No? So, yeah, and uh, basically because uh, it will really suffer if you put people there who are not, who, who do not capable. know, the, uh, yes, or are not capable in uh, solving, especially at this point of time, solving the massive problem of our uh, infrastructure in our uh, te- uh, telecommunication industry. General Rio, going through yung ano nyo eh, kumbaga, who you are, where you've been, how, what you've done, going through all of that, I mean, that's a whole lot of list. That's a whole lot of, that, it, it's almost like a, that's a big shoe to fill. Kung merong papalit sa inyo, that's a very, very <laughs> big shoes to fill. Yeah, napaka napakahirap maghanap ng isang tao na napaka dedicated uh, tulad oh, ni General Rio. You. <laughs> in, in his Ay, career, ma- um, yung passion, no? The passion yeah. you can see all throughout from his military life to his civilian life, it's all about telecommunication, com- communication, engineering. Uh, when when I was reading it, I said, no doubt, no doubt the General Rio, not because he is our guest today, deserves <laughs> to run that organization. Yes, sir, Nikki. Tsaka, syempre, ako, I was very hopeful nung uh, siya bring nga, nung sinasabi ni, ni President Duterte na, uh, you know what? I want this to happen to our country. I want us to to be more updated. I want us to be as fast as as, as, as we can be so we can grow quicker and, 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 and better uh, than ever. Diba? So here we are um, thinking all of that and then all of a sudden, parabang, ano nangyari? <laughs> well, Carlo, <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, humility aside, I was able yes, to sir. deliver, no? Um, oh, Ted Telco, he said, he was Ted Telco, okay, I, I got it for him uh, in a manner that was so transparent that uh, that uh, no people, or uh, well, people were not able, did not uh, bring us to court or anything like that unlike before 
you know, there are no losers in the Philippines, no? There are two kinds of those who won or those who are cheated. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. but now, uh, we got a trade trail, no? uh, very transparent. In fact, we were helped by ITU, no? And uh, for the first time in uh, in our history, no, we, the government was able to get two cable landing stations. All of our cable landing stations no, that are very important for our internet connectivity are all owned by Globe and Smart. Now we have two uh, cable landing stations where we can we are getting two terabits, almost half of what uh, Globe uh, is capable of. Two terabits of bandwidth capacity from LA, no, uh, because we allowed uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, they have a big uh, submarine cable from LA to Hong Kong, um, but it passes through the uh, uh, what we call the Luzon Strait, the area between uh, Batanes and Taiwan. And in that area, it is visited by earthquake and uh, typhoon that almost every year, cables there get uh, broken. No? So they wanted to bypass it through our uh, uh, central Luzon. Uh, and we did that. Uh, and in fact, uh, this September, they will uh, light up, for, they will light up the connectivity from LA to uh, uh, Baler Aurora uh, with two terabits of and this is the uh, what we are going to use for our free Wi-Fi and for our national broadband program. Because right now we are dependent on the commercial telcos for the bandwidth of this, no? And it's quite expensive. Uh, so that will uh, uh, really be a big, uh, great, uh, it's a, a big deal for us to have this, no? And then uh, we were able to get a, a backbone, in fact. Uh, the uh, dark fiber of our national grid uh, transmission lines, the electric lines from north to south of the Philippines. Uh, there's a dark fiber there that we were able to use, 7,200 kilometers for wow. our backbone for the uh, free Wi-Fi and for the national broadband program. No? At no so charge, again, to the government. So, so fiber ito, sir, fiber, huh? Yeah, it's fiber, fiber wow. too. Wala na, wala na po yung copper. Ninanakaw po wala yung copper. copper. <laughs> yeah, that, yes. That, that, that's good, right? So yeah. project nyo po yun, yung, 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 yung sinasabi nyo yung, uh, yes. yung so, terabis sa... Uh, wow. Yes, that was, uh, uh, that was uh, done during my time as, uh, assist, uh, as uh, acting secretary. No? And uh, yun nga. And then when uh, Se Secretary Ronasan took over, uh, they just continued. We are, we are just continuing what uh, we are starting. Sir, ma ma makat ko kayo, sir. Sir, makat ko kayo. Uh, having said that kasi, ano, um, what bothers me is uh, obviously the qualifications of, of whoever is uh, taking over uh, any position right now that is uh, trying to fill your shoe as well as uh, the department. Ano? So, with with due respect to uh, former Senator Onasa, uh, you know, and then he used to be in the military and whatnot. Um, I don't think he has an engineering background at all, right? No, none. So yeah, and then, and, mm. yes, and then uh, also uh, if, if you look right now, uh, the 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 guy that replaced you, uh, musician, uh, entrepreneur uh, R.J. Jacinto, okay. I know he has been an advisor on ICT, and but you know, being an advisor is totally different from handling a portfolio. Yes. Thoughts? Yes. What's your, what are your thoughts, General Rio? Well, actually, yes, uh, but it has to be challenged. No, no nobody has challenged it yet. <laughs> In other words, uh, uh, why are, are the uh, uh, well, the qualification uh, that are in the provision of the DICT law, why are they not being followed? No? And, and uh, so it has to be challenged. And so far, no one has challenged it. Kasi Did you know? Sir, uh, yeah. Sorry, Carlos, no? no go, ahead, go ahead. Kasi, kasi ganito yun, Carlos, ano? And, 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 and General Rio. This sets a very bad precedent for uh, the Philippines. 
Now, DICT is a new organization, right? And when it was set up, ang ganda ng mandate, no? Ang ganda ng ng trabaho ng DICT. And I was really happy, you know? Finally, finally, we're doing something about our infrastructure. Itong internet natin na napakabagal, ang daming nagre-reklamo. Kawawa yung mga kapapayan natin, ano? And uh, ngayon, tinutugunan na nga. And all of a sudden, may papasok. And yung mga kinuha, hindi qualified. Ang dami naman departamento na pag paglagyan. Bakit naman po ang DICT? Ang ginamit nila. Ang uh, ginagay natin, hindi pa mga engineer. Well, uh, I could not really answer you that. <laughs> Uh, it happened. It happened. No, we are also wondering why. <laughs> uh, but uh, pero yes, uh, mm -hmm. sir general, um, did you know that when you were going out or when you signed for your uh, resignation, do you know who was coming in to replace you, or was that a part of the reason why you were resigning because somebody was? No, no. When I resigned uh, four months ago, it was because of this uh, issue on uh, confidential funds. No? Okay. And, uh, that was patched up. This one, uh, I re was really caught by surprise by the acceptance. No? Actually, I did not resign anymore. My resignation remained on the table of the president. I thought he tore it, but he did not. <laughs> uh, so it was used again. Uh, uh, just just by saying that it was accepted, no, uh, four months later, so that was that caught me by surprise, really, because in the midst of a pandemic uh, crisis, no, where ICT is playing a big role, that suddenly this was accepted, and then uh, RJ was my replacement, and of course, you know, we had some uh, uh, disagreement with RJ. Uh, in the past, no, uh, of, uh, in the common towers uh, policy uh, that we were crafting then. And, and by the way, the common tower policy is actually uh, what made the, our country, no, 2019, for the first time in our history, BOI investment reported by the, our Department of Trade Industry breached the one trillion mark of uh, committed investment from uh, private sector, pri private company, you no? Know? One trillion. And wow. one half of that uh, came from ICT sector. Of course, the third telco was there, uh, the common towers, and we were able to get some investment from um, uh, companies that will roll out uh, fiber optic cable uh, all over the country. So uh, we are proud to say that uh, uh, the contribution of the ICT sector last year, 2019, is uh, equal or even more than the combined contribution of all other sectors uh, taken together. No? So that did not happen the first time it happened in our history. Before we before we go and move forward, dear sir, um, sir, sir, general. Um, I know we only asked for our half an hour of your time. Uh, may overtime tayo. We really appreciate <laughs> okay it. Okay We're, I think I think we have some more questions. Um, um Sir Nikki, okay lang po ba tayo sa general? Yes, sure, general, sure. if you're okay. Can we proceed? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Yes, uh, alam mo, uh, napaka ano no, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, information to be covered. Um, yung mga tao, mga kababayan po natin, uh, sigurado ko maraming manunod at uh, makakaintindi kung ano na ang nagawa ng pamahalaan no? uh, under your watch as, as DICT Acting Secretary and Undersecretary. Uh, it's no secret na nagkaroon nga kayo ng touching of talking about uh, RJ Hansinto, nagkaroon po kayo ng konting misunderstanding uh, with regards to the common tower. Uh, Ano, ano po ba yung common tower na pinupush na ni, ni Mr. Jacinto? Can you uh, explain this in layman language so people can understand what this is okay. all about? It is on the uh, uh, policy of the common towers. I was uh, for market forces. No? In other words, uh, no limit as to who will uh, 
uh, come in uh, to, uh, for a common tower provider. No? Uh, of course, uh, IJ position is to limit it to only two. That's where he was uh, criticized, actually. We are trying to uh, go out of the duopoly in the telecommunication services. And now you want a duopoly in the common towers. No? Um, he said that, of course, uh, it is not viable for have so many common tower providers uh, in place. But I said, let, let uh, market forces decide that, not us. Yes. No? So, so what I did was, since I was the one uh, in charge, actually, and, and not him, was to allow, uh, you know, uh, who are whoever are interested to come in, and you're able to get 24 uh, uh, interested common tower providers. Now, and in fact, that is the one that actually increased the commitment in the uh, investment of our country uh, in 2019. Sa BOI, sir. Sa BOI, no? Yeah, in the, in the board of investment, no? And... Uh, my 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 uh, when I said, oh, okay, you come in, but uh, we will only give you a permanent uh, agreement, no? If you can get at least a uh, contract from a telco, no? So yes, they all of them went uh, uh, selling themselves to the telco that they should be given. I said you did only one contract for for us to come up with a more permanent uh, memorandum of agreement no? that we will, as uh, the ICT, we will uh, take care of all the uh, permits, of uh, incentives that you will be getting as long as you can at least get one <laughs> contract. So uh, yeah, they, they did their best. And up to, up, uh, up to this point of time, there are about four who were able to get the contract and uh, the rest, well, uh, because uh, I told them you have to do that within a year's time, no? And uh, that year has already lapsed. And therefore, we have now uh, four uh, companies that are uh, rolling out cell sites uh, because the telcos actually selected them, not the government. No? Uh, in Argy's case, he wants the government to select. <laughs> I said, how can we do that? Uh, the, the their uh, clientele are, are the telcos, no? What if you select somebody and then the telcos don't like <laughs> to, to, to deal with them? So let the telcos, let the market forces do the selection. And it did. It did a nice job. In fact, it increased the, uh, as I've said, it increased the uh, uh, committed investment that we had, no? If had we forced them, it, we could not have, uh, have that kind of investment in our country. 1.3 trillion, sir. 1.3 trillion, is that correct? Yes, yes. And from uh, the 2019 of that industry. came from us. Wow. Uh, amazing, normally amazing it job. Is the, yeah, normally it is the uh, uh, power sector that uh, has the biggest share, but even the power sector plus all other sectors combined, uh, well, it's all it's almost equal to what. Uh, the ICT sector had. So, uh, Carlos, you have any questions, Carlos? Yeah, I almost want to know. I almost want to know, Mr. Rio, what's next? Anong susunod na kabanata kay uh, General <laughs> Rio? <laughs> Kasi well, ang dami, uh, ang dami yeah. pang, we, we, you can tell, Sir Nikki, there's still, there's still lots of power to, uh, to, to General. And, and, ano eh, parang ang gandang, ano, ano? Um, thank you, thank you, Carla. Oh, uh, no, it's, 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 it's uh, great. Well, uh, I am 75 years old, no? Uh, I'm 57 bit... lang eh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm older than uh, the president. No? Uh, yeah, I'm 75 years old. Uh, and of course, uh, well, I should be uh, fully retired, they say. Oh, but boss. I can still act in my personal capacity. No? In fact, uh, right now, I would like to, uh, the problem, for example, uh, we are going to open classes on August 24 of this year. And of course, uh, 
as long as we don't have the uh, vaccine for this uh, COVID-19, uh, we'll be, uh, this is the new norm, no? Uh, social distancing and things. So you cannot really pack up students inside a classroom. That's right, that's Inuman, right. Ang classrooms ngayon talagang uh, overcrowded na because, and it's very expensive to put up uh, new classrooms and of course new teachers. So I said, uh, why not have the few students who are who could go to the classroom, mga um, 50% maybe, and the teacher is there, this, and have it live stream as like what we are doing right now. That's right. To the other students who will now go to or have their uh, lessons from their home if they have connectivity. Well, of course, you know that most w wouldn't have, but we are creating now what we call uh, digital classrooms. It, we are repurposing, in fact, uh, internet cafe so that, you know, here in the Philippines, you can walk to a, an internet cafe near your home, no? And oh, go well. there and then uh, take your classes from there, no? So we have to repurpose them instead. They are now in games, of course. <laughs> but now we have to do it uh, so that they can uh, have, they can accept students, no? And, uh, and we are going to give them incentive because uh, right now, and, and people go to work also, no? So they have two clientele, uh, almost uh, uh, 40 million, in fact, no? If you count the 50% of student population, 50% of people going to work, that's a big clientele for them. And in fact, it is a new... That is right. Um, it is a new business model for the yes, new... Yeah. <laughs> so, that yes. I, and, toto, toto. And I, I really, really believe that. I really yes. believe that, yes. And because I believe it too, then that said, uh, yeah, I'm going Let's to, make to it go happen. full time in yeah. going into this kind of business. No? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, uh, come up with uh, 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 classroom uh, settings for, for, and then have this, uh, you know, teachers can teach. You don't need to add teachers oh actually. Uh, you don't need to add more classrooms. This one will be done by investors in uh, in uh, <clears throat> digital classrooms, digital workplace, and they work. Uh, imagine here in Metro Manila alone, we spend about uh, JICA. JICA says that we spend around, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 1.7 or no, uh, 1.4 billion pesos a day. No. Uh, because of the traffic in Metro Manila. Actually, you are throwing that amount of money every day. Every day. That money can go to uh, digital classrooms yeah. because you don't have to travel anymore. No? And it will really uh, improve the traffic also, in Exa. Yeah, that will also ease up pollution. Yes. In fact, right now, because of the COVID-19, it's very clean in Manila. Yeah, Metro the air Manila. is very clean. <laughs> So, you know, balikan lang natin konti, no? backtrack lang tayo ng konti, um, napapasarap ang kwento natin. Ano? Um, itong cellular restrictions in the Philippines, ano? I don't understand this. I've, I've been wanting to ask you about this ano? and uh, Carlos would, I, I believe, agree. Bakit po sa Pilipinas ang cellular po kailangan globe to globe lang? Eh, hindi pwedeng, you know, if, if you go globe to smart, then you have to pay more. In other countries, you know, uh, if you have a cell provider, right? Like, let's say, for example, in Canada, you have Telus, mm -hmm. you have Rogers, you have mm -hmm. Bell. Bell, if if you if you are uh, under Bell or under Rogers, you can call any any uh, telecommunication uh, provider, yes. right? And walang additional charges. Yun. Bak bakit po sa atin meron mga ganun po? Actually, we corrected it already, Nikki. There's now a law Ooh. that you okay. can transfer from one. Uh, 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 Tel telco to another at no cost to her. And in fact, you can bring your own numbers, no? Oh, okay. uh, that, is, oh we, that was enacted last year. We also advocated that uh, because, yes, uh, uh, that's one uh, problem to free up uh, or to have more competition, no? Hassle talaga uh, right now to transfer from one telco to another because, uh, you know, uh, even if you don't like the service anymore, it will be a hassle to go to another telco because uh, you have to inform all your friends that you have uh, to change your number. And uh, of course, you, like what you said, 
it also uh, it will give you uh, there's also a cost no, in transferring that one is now sold um, and in fact uh, with the third telco coming in and becoming uh, operational by uh, March of 2021 uh, the third telco in fact benefited very much on the uh, from this law no because now Globe and Smart can transfer to it without so much hassle. So that's that has been solved actually uh, uh, by our government. And Carlos, that was just last year. Time? Yes, uh, last year, last year. Oh wow! And it was of course uh, the ICT who advocated it. Great job, sir. Yeah, that's that that's a, a good one, really good one. Uh, ang tagal nuna, uh, ang tagal nuna ganon ang situation, ang situation na talagang monopolized ang, ang sa akin ha sorry monopoly, pardon me monopoly. talagang monopoly monopolized ang, ang ginawa ng uh, dalawang uh, kumpanyang ito yes um, and of course you have you have to get uh, give credit to, of course to the president Duterte because may political will siya at nangyari ito that's right that's right um so mr rio it was such a it was such a great honor it was such a great honor to have you in our show tonight and again thank you for taking the time um you know, alam ko po, napaka-busy nyo. Nag-golf na kayo, siguro. <laughs> uh, ano pa ba yung mga busy ginagawa nyo dyan? Dalong-dalong yeah, lalo na ngayon. Golf, golf, golf. Oo. Membro pala ito natin. Uh, <laughs> 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 golf, 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 ano? <laughs> golf din yan. <laughs> uh, but anyways, well, before, and also... Yeah. Go ahead, Sir Nicky. Sir, go, go yeah, ahead. Before we let you go, sir, uh, medyo... Off, off beat tayo, off beat. Okay. Oh, sige, sige, sige. You were, you were, you were NPC commissioner, eh. and then yeah. ang, ang yes. mga pangyayari ngayon. Alam mo, very controversial yung NPC, ano? Dun sa issue ng Ay. cease and desist order on ABS-CBN. Sa ABS-CBN. Yes. Ano, ano pong masasabi niyo po dun sa? Well, first time that it happened, no? Uh, uh, there have been plenty of cases before that uh, franchise were delayed, uh, not only for uh, broadcasting, but even telco, Globe and Smart. Uh, na delayed din yung kanilang uh, franchise, yung, yung renewal, no? Or, or extension of their franchise. But they were allowed to operate because yun ang number one kwan eh. Uh, it is uh, public interest, no? Na hindi mo putulin ka agad because there are so many uh, subscribers still uh, depending on 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 these uh, companies, and of course uh, ABS-CBN. Man, there are so many subscribers uh, 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 following it up, following it, no. So yun ang ang concept noon. Uh, in fact, uh, that was what we were following in when I was NPC commissioner. Uh, we were thinking always of public interest. Kung putuli mo kaagad. Uh, well, hindi lang yung mga empleyado ng kumpanya itself, but yung mga subscribers, no? You are depriving them of uh, their their uh, choice, no? As a broadcast naman, hindi gaano uh, ang subscription ng, ng broadcast, hindi katulad ng, ng telco, no? Because pag naputol ang uh, telco, for example, lahat ng mga subscriber niyan, wala talagang, wala talagang service. service at uh, pupunta lahat sa kabilang uh, uh, telco na nagkakaroon na naman tayo ng duopoly. So it was much easier to to uh, explain it na bakit hindi natin katala putulin ka agad. No? Sa broadcast naman, ay, it's a different story no? because anybody can change channels in their television yeah. set and things yeah. like that without uh, so much... More choices. Uh, More choices. Yes, so, oh. But still, say uh, the same. Uh, ang kwan nito is uh, it happened before, but hindi pwede sa ABS-CBN. But of course, iba ang ang direction ngayon na, ng ating gobyerno. Uh, and uh, yun lang na na natama ng ABS-CBN sa sa new direction. <laughs> I see. Pero matagal din siya, di ba? Matagal din po ang ang Miro, matagal na nila dapat uh, sinimulan yung application na yan. Ano? For 2014, sinimulan na nila. So that... that that's the that uh, time of uh, Pinoy. Of, yeah, so that's uh, six years ago, right? So, yes, yes. So, ang ang, well, ang tagal pa na, hindi didn't act on it, right? Yes. 
Nagka-problema rin sila sa administration ni ni uh, uh, President Aquino, Ninoy Aquino. Uh, well, alam niyo naman, uh, hindi, <laughs> uh, hindi maganda yung pag-treat nila doon sa masapano incident, no? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, na, nagkaroon sila ng problema doon kaya hindi rin na-extend during the time of Pinoy. So, sir, uh, alam Maraming salamat talaga. Ang daming uh, daming niyo na share sa amin uh, at sa mga viewers po natin, ano? Uh, Carlos, uh, do you wanna add anything uh, before uh, I close up? Uh, ako, I'm just absorbing talaga lahat ng mga <laughs> narinig ko today and uh, with you, both of you. Uh, maraming maraming salamat. And Sir Nikki, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, contacting our General Rio for this wonderful um Um, interview that we have uh, with him. So, congratulations. To, to, no, thank you very much, Sir Nikki. Thank, <laughs> thank you very you, much. Thank you. Thank you. And so, sir, you it was an honor for me. Thank you yes, very sir, much for inviting me. Uh, thank you for the service uh, uh, to the country and the whole team of Fort State. Uh, kasama namin si Carlos and uh, Sherry Ann. Uh, we wish you Sherry. all the best. And uh, when you go back to your private life, uh, good health. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, I wish you also the same. Good health too. And uh, stay safe. Yes, same to you, sir. And hopefully we can go up together. Yes. <laughs> go up. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So to all our viewers, uh, to all our viewers uh, tonight, uh, this is Nikki Gokwan of the Fort Estate with my co-host Carlos Santillan. And maraming salamat po, General Rio. Have a good evening. Thank you very much too. And uh, good night, everyone.